There are lots of ways to host your Django application online, be it serverless or other containerized based solutions, but all of them have the same roadblock, which is having a free database. Because Django has poor integration with NoSQL databases, and NoSQL databases actually often are free, let's say MongoDB or Firestore from Google or DynamoDB from AWS. So in this video, I'm gonna share 10 such services that provide a database for free, and all of them are hopefully going to be free forever, or at least there don't seem to be any monthly caps on how long you can use these services free for. So let's get into it. So the first one is going to be PlanetScale, which provides five gigabytes of storage, one billion row reads, 10 million row writes, and branching based development. So dev environment and production environment. So you can have different environment branches where you can have different data. So this is probably the easiest of the bunch. With this, you will get a free MySQL database, so not a Postgres database, which is a shame. If not, this would be probably the best option to be going with because personally, I like Postgres. And because this is using the default MySQL database, you can use the MySQL connector that comes with Django itself. The second one is CockroachDB. So don't focus too much on the name and how disgusting it sounds, but they recently have a serverless option so CockroachDB is basically a database that is built upon Postgres. So most of the commands that you can run with Postgres, I think also run with CockroachDB and CockroachDB also provides a connector for your Django application. One of the things I don't like about CockroachDB, however, is the request units. So it sounds like a lot, but it's not exactly 200 million. There's some strange calculations you have to do here. And you might actually go over if your if your hobby site is getting a lot of visits. So if they could somehow make this a bit less complicated, that would be great. Now another one I was gonna suggest is called Yugabyte TV, but it looks like they've recently closed down their free forever tier, and now they switched to a free trial for just thirty days. So as you can see, these free databases don't last very long. Same with Heroku, which also ha used to have a free Postgres database that you could use, but now they're not offering it anymore. Yeah, this was going to be the number three, but yeah, let's move on to the next one. So the fourth one is FaunaDB. So this is, if I remember correctly, this built upon MySQL. So this also has a Django DB connector built in. And some of the features that you get on the free tier are, again, this kind of complicated quotas. I don't know what a TRO is or what it's supposed to be, but at least it's five gigabytes of storage. So that's very clear. So this might be good to use for your hobby application, which might not get a lot of visits because yeah, I'm not sure. I think this actually doesn't, yeah, it doesn't need a credit card. So you don't need to worry about getting accidentally charged if your app actually grows in size either, but they might decide to just cancel your database pretty much, but I don't know which one you'd prefer having your website shut down or getting accidentally charged because you're getting too many visitors. So my next one is going to be something I've already featured in a previous video of mine where I shared some Heroku alternatives. So this is render.com. They provide a Postgres database for free. And it says here it's free for the first 90 days, but it will just expire after 90 days. So you can basically just delete the old database and then create a new one again so it's like forever free but with a catch so i like this very much because of its clear kind of model okay you basically have 256 mb ram some shared cpu one gigabyte of storage and that's it there's no like tro or rsu or <laughs> whatever so very good and also the fact that it's postgres like the default postgres means that you'll have you'll have a lot of support because postgres is one of the most used database with Django. Now my sixth one is going to be fly.io. So fly.io provides three shared CPUs with 256 MBV RAMs, VMs, and three gigs of persistent storage in total. Basically they have a similar model to render.com. There's no weird complicated request units or TROs and stuff like that. So very easy to get used to. Also it is Again, default Postgres. The next one is going to be Superbase. So Superbase also provides a 500 MB database and 
I remember correctly, they also provide some other things, but for just a database, that's just a pretty good one to start out with. And they don't have any other sort of limitations for number of queries you can do and other stuff. I think this is a Postgres database. Yeah, it's a Postgres database and they have unlimited API requests. One thing to do, one thing to keep in mind is they have egress of just two gigabytes. So I don't think you'll run out for this one for a normal hobby site, but just something to keep in mind. Now, another one is called adaptable.io. So they provide one gigabyte of database storage and 256 MB of RAM, enough for your hobby project and Postgres or Microsoft SQL Server. If you're going with Django, I probably just could stick with uh, PostgreSQL. Now, a bit of a side note. If you're enjoying this video, I really like it if you can give it a subscribe. And one thing, one way you can help me out is if you can use my referral code for Hasner, which gives you 20 euros of credit. I think it's six months. And you can basically also with this, you can get the cheapest server. You can run that for about five months. And that is a database basically you can have for five months. So yeah, check out my local link below and yeah, use Hasner. It's one of the cheapest cloud providers I've found. And I personally have used more than um, 1000 euros with. So yeah, it's pretty great. Now, another one for, for the free database is called bit.io. So you can, with this one, you can get three free databases with three gigs of storage and one billion rows queried per month. So this might be key with if you're doing an index scan, I'm not sure how that would work, but I think one billion, I don't think you would pass this limit on a hobby project at all. So this one seems like a good one. Also, it seems to be Postgres database. Now the last one, but not the least is neon.tech. So this seems to be a kind of a newcomer to serverless database. One of the most famous one, which is the planet scale, which I showed off before, but it's only for MySQL databases. So MySQL databases have, from what I know, at least some problems with foreign key constraints, but Neon seems to be planet scale, but for Postgres. So they also have free database tier. So right now it's invite only, but soon it's going to be free for all. So I would not miss it if I were you. So this one is a bit <laughs> tricky to find exactly where they have the free three year, but here it is. So they have one project with up to 10 branches. So similar to planet scale, it also has the branches thing you can work with and you can have three gigabytes of storage in each branch and up to three compute endpoints with one vCPU and four should be run. That's pretty neat actually. But with this being a technical preview, I would not assume they probably are going to last that long. They seem to have some decent funding. If I remember correctly, they got 3 million or so in funding. Ah, okay. 54 million. That's much more than I remembered, but yeah, I would still probably with the funding thing with VCs, they want growth, but right now I think they're probably going to be looking into cutting growth for actual revenue. So they might cut this free tier in the next, let's say a year. So that was my full list of free databases that you can use with Django. For the next video, I'm thinking of doing something with how you can integrate a Next.js application in a monorepo with your Django application. So let me know if that sounds interesting and see you in the next video. Bye now.